This is Bob Andelman, and you're listening to and hopefully watching the Mr. Media interview with former National Lampoon and Spy Magazine editor Tony Hendra, whose new humor website is thefinaledition.com. Um, you know, in the introduction, uh, I, I, I read a little bit from uh, Rick Meyerowitz's book, uh, Drunk Stone, Brilliant Dead, about the, uh, the Lampoon days. I, I'm curious, uh, and I know you mentioned that you were friends with Rick. What did you think of the book? Well, um, I thought the book was absolutely magnificent. And um, I say that in the context of um, a number of previous Lampoon books, which I thought were anything but. Um, and um, I actually had the, had the dubious distinction of, of writing the first account of the National Lampoon uh, in a book I wrote called Going Too Far, which was, um, which was a history of American satire from the mid-50s up into basically the demise of the Lampoon. Um, but um, but it wasn't a book. I mean, it was it, it was a fairly and it was a fairly personal history of the lampoon. But I found that the the books the other books that came out about the lampoon tended to stress to an unnatural degree um, the sort of fights and squabbles and egos and just the sort of negative part of the lampoon um, in a way that 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 seemed to me after a while to be not only tedious but depressing because there were people who died at the Lampoon obviously who were central uh, central to its success in one way or another like uh, like John Belushi and um, and, and Doug of course um, but there were others too and, um, and, and to, to stress all that stuff and the, you know, the conflicts and so on seemed to me to give, give a very bad impression of just what enormous fun it was to go to work there every morning and, um, and this book was in, in large part because it was done by an outsider uh, who was also an insider, just was 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 sort of, it, it expressed that spirit that that that, that we just uh, you know we did we had a wonderful time. I mean, obviously there were conflicts. It was a very successful magazine, and magazines politics are always can always be deadly. But but it was um, it was remarkable really just how much funny stuff we managed to produce. The other thing about the book that's really wonderful is that it concentrates on what was really the strongest and most unique part of the Lampoon, which was its artwork and graphics. Um, the, the Lampoon was very funny and, and written by some very brilliant people, um, but its words were only part of the picture. Uh, the pictures were the other half. And, um, and, and the, this book celebrates those in, in, a, in a way that only an artist really could. Uh, so anyway, I think I think it was, as I say, I think it was a triumph and a great tribute to the Lampoon. Um, finally, the, the Lampoon finally got its due. And, and interestingly enough, the New York Times, who virtually never acknowledges the Lampoon, or, or had not had virtually never acknowledged the Lampoon up to that point, or I should say, its importance in American humor from really the seventies on, uh, considering how many people it influenced. Um, finally did a, a review of the book, which is not only a glowing review, but, but said very clearly, without the National Lampoon, no Saturday Night Live, no Spy Magazine, um, you know, no late night shows uh, done by people of that generation, and so on and so forth. Um, and um, and it, was, um, it, was very, it was very gratifying to see that, finally. The only, the only sour note, I thought, was, uh, was that I was described as legendary, which um, I normally interpret as meaning recently deceased. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! But anyway, it was uh, it is a fine book, and it's well worth well worth the cover price. Right. Well, I, I, you know, um, as you were talking about uh, the book, I was I was thinking of uh, some other folks from the uh, from the Lampoon who've been on this show. Um, uh, Ratso has been on, and mm -hmm. uh, Drew Friedman's been on a couple times, and I'm probably thinking I'm probably missing a couple others. Um, the thing that I really liked about Rick's book was was probably exactly what you're talking about. Uh, as a guy who was, who was in high school and then in college during that period of time, uh, I always thought it had to be, you know, you, you think, you know, as a kid, you think, oh, it must be a magical place to work. I submitted stuff to the Lampoon in those days. I have the rejection letters that were wonderful to get. You know, I, I love that stuff. And, but it gave me a, a sense of place. I felt like a sense of place and a sense of time. And, uh, you know, and I didn't know if, if Rick had, uh, you know, just made it all too wonderful or captured it just right. And see, I, I like to think he captured it just right because it appealed to me that way. 
I think the best way, as somebody put it, the best way to put it actually is um, is that the, is that what what he managed to produce or edit uh, was a three hundred page issue of the National Lampoon, mm. and that's really what was so great about it. I mean, it, it not only it, it wasn't just nostalgic either. I, I think a great a great deal of the material in there um, holds up um, very well, and I think one of the one one of the interesting things from my sort of personal point of view is that um, it was in a way because of that book that um, that I began to uh, that I began to work on on this site because it brought it, when when we were you know when we were um, uh, when we were putting it together and and I wrote quite a few of the quite a few of the uh, pieces in there too as as did others but but you know there was a lot of a lot of that kind of writing to do but it was just it was just kind of wonderful to be uh, looking at this stuff again and remembering just how frankly good and unique the humor was um and it very much was um it, it was very much um a reason for why i decided at my advanced age to um, to actually take this step uh, because I sort of wanted to put that kind of humor back in the mix and I think um, so far we're succeeding hmm. was there anything that he left out that you would have liked to seen in there any you know any good stories or memories of your own that uh... oh a lot more of my material <laughs> there you go <laughs> He left out far too much of my return. No, no, actually, I thought he did a wonderfully balanced job, and um, <clears throat> with the exception of his own stuff, of course, he got like 18 pages. But who could blame him? Nah. Who could blame him? I would have done the same thing. I liked. Uh, <laughs> I, I was delighted to see one of my favorites from when I was in high school was in there. It was uh, uh, Underwear for the Deaf. <laughs> oh, indeed, so, indeed. So Very important so, piece. Lu so ludicrous, right. but, you know, I just I never forgot it all those years, and when I got the book and I was thumbing through it, I went, "Oh, it's here! Look, honey, you got to see this." And she's like, "You're an idiot! What do you, what do you know?" Anyway, now, now well, that, was one of the, that was one of the things about O'Donoghue. Actually, he had a wonderful way, um, and and that certainly was one of them. Mm. It, uh, the Vietnamese baby book was another, mm -hmm. uh, just expressed in one phrase what what was going on there. Uh, Brilliant. Of course. Uh, now, I'm trying to remember. Was the was the the wife tasting was yours, wasn't it? It was indeed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm proud to say. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? There's, there's fine, fruity Californian wine. <laughs> the sad thing is, I didn't get the joke until I was a grown man. I did not get well, the joke when I was in high school. It just didn't, you know. I, I'm afraid it went way over my head for many years. and then I, I There were many people, many people who didn't get the joke at the time, but that was because they didn't drink wine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they smoked dope instead. Yeah. I can tell you, I, I was not drinking wine at that time.